Hi, I'm Gavin Weber from Little Green Workshops and today we're making a dragon's blood soap and we're going to be using the cold process method. Okay, so we're going to use our standard oils. We're going to be using uh, olive oil, rice bran oil, sunflower oil and olive oil, uh, sorry, coconut oil. We're going to be using caustic soda, better known as lye, and of course water. So they're all the natural ingredients that we're going to be using for our soap. We're also going to be using some colorants. So we're going to be using some titanium dioxide, which is a mineral powder. And we're going to be using a cosmetic color, which is a rubine red. And last but not least, we're going to be using dragon's blood fragrance oil in this soap. Okay, I'll start measuring out all of the ingredients now. So just a point about the water, this is non-chlorinated water. Uh, I'm just going to make sure it's non-chlorinated water with the soap because it reacts with the caustic soda uh, if you have too much chlorine in the water. So we're using a pure water that's come in a box. Uh, you can use rain water if you have it. Uh, that's uh, nice and safe. So just a note, this is not a full tutorial. So I'm just going to talk through what I'm doing here. So I'm adding the coconut oil to the pot and now I'm adding the olive oil. Now if you want to see full tutorial you can check it out by looking at the information button here. This is the rice bran oil and now I'm putting in the sunflower oil. Now I'm measuring these all by weight. Now I'm measuring out the water allowance. Went a little bit over there. And now I'm going to put on my protecting protective gear. So put on my safety glasses and put on my rubber gloves. Because I'm going to be handling the caustic soda now and measuring that out now. It did have some lumps in it, so I had to give it a bit of a shake there. So I'm weighing that out now. Now I'm weighing out my fragrance oil. Put that to one side. And now I'm just going to mix up my titanium dioxide. I'm using one tablespoon of the water allowance and one tablespoon of titanium dioxide because I'm using half of the mixture to colour. Just half of it for this uh, recipe. Right, yeah, so we're going to be adding the caustic soda to the water. Never the other way around, always the powder to the water. If you add it the other way around, you get a live volcano. So I've got my protective gear on, get as close as I can. Get all that out. Let's get that out of the way. Get a stir. Very gently. And I'll put that back a bit because there's some steam coming off. And you should always do this in a well ventilated area. And just stir until you can't feel any crystals on the bottom. And I always do it at arm's length. So just uh, making sure that all the crystals are gone, as I mentioned, and now we're just waiting for it to go clear and the steam to stop. Just coming off that liquid there. Once that's gone clear, like it did, we just put that into the oils and it helps melt the coconut oil. It takes about between three and five minutes to uh, stir that through and melt all the oils, make sure they're thoroughly combined. So I've still got all my protective gear on because if this splashes you, you will still get a caustic burn. And that can be neutralized fairly easily with uh, spraying just simply white vinegar on it. Now that's all done, so I'm just, just quickly stick blending that and that'll uh, bring it up to a light trace, which it has. Now things go a little bit uh, uh, awry here because uh, I forgot to put the fragrance oil in. So I had to pour back a little bit of the batter that I'd, uh, I'd uh, separated out there the uh, there we go put in the fragrance oil uh, whip that up there 
got a bit of a medium trace, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, so split that out again. Put the titanium dioxide into the main part of the batter, and then we'll just give that a quick uh, blend there so that the colour goes all the way through it. Now I tried to use a little milk frother, that didn't work, so I had to hand whisk it just to get the, uh, the red to go all the way through, so that's all done. It's quite thick, so it didn't pour as well as I thought it would. Got it all out eventually. So just got all that out, leveled it off there, and then poured the red on, which is, uh, you know, trying to imitate the dragon's blood, of course. So here we go, get it all out, spread it smoothly now, just uh, to create an effect within the soap, I've just plunged the spoon into the, the, the two colours to try and mix them up a little bit. Just a bit of a random effect there, and you'll see how nice it looks at the end when I cut the soap. So it's just plunging the spoon into the two layers, brings a little bit of white out as well, creates a nice pattern on the top. You don't need to overdo it. Let's get the excess off the spoon there. And I'm just going to level it off next. And you just jiggle it back and forth and that levels the soap batter off so you get a nice level top. And one final thing to do, and that is to, oh, there we go, ta-da. <laughs> and we're going to spritz it with isopropyl alcohol, or better known as rubbing alcohol, just to make sure it doesn't form soda ash on the top. Now, 24 hours later, we have uh, unpacked it out of the mold, and it's time to cut it so it can cure properly. So I'm using a crinkly cutter and our soap cutting box. So it's cut through firmly. And you can see the wonderful patterns that spoon plunging did. Uh, once you see the, uh, the first bar come up there. There we go. Nice and simple pattern. But it does look quite spectacular, I think. Now because I'm using titanium dioxide, I had to clean the blade in between each cut and that was just simply done with a an old tea towel and just wipe the blade clean. And that prevents drag marks from uh, w with the next cut. So that's just a tip that uh, we've learnt when we, uh, we use this wavy soap cutter and uh, there's titanium dioxide within the soap. So just a quick wipe and then you do the next cut. Don't slow things down a little bit, but you want a nice perfectly looking pattern. You want these drag marks all over the soap. Now normally out of a uh, the one kilo of oils we get nine big solid bars and these these bars are about three centimeters across. And they weigh about 140 grams each uh, which is pretty heavy for a bar of soap normal bars of soap you get in the uh, in the supermarket I think they're about 100 grams if you're lucky and there we go there they are in all their glory so I think they're pretty spectacular looking bars of soap as far as I'm concerned so they're dragon's blood soap So don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel if you want to see new and upcoming uh, videos. And also you can get the ingredients here at the shop. And don't forget to check out another one of our wonderful soap making or cheese making or candle making videos. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.